A really cool thing that some people might not know about, about Monument Valley, um, well, they might know the first part, but not the second part. Um, there's two a big rock monuments that are shaped like hands, and they're called the mittens. And twice a year, the way the sun sets um, in September and I think April, one mitten's shadow will show on the other mitten as the sun oh, wow. sets, if you're lucky and it's not cloudy. Um, and we actually got to see that. It was pretty crazy, incredible. Today, you will learn English with communication expert Jennifer Kumar and learn about some incredible places that you should visit in the USA. And I bet you have never heard of them. So every week, we make lessons like this to help you to understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Like Zahid, who is learning so much more than he ever could in the classroom, and even has improved his speaking. So we'll help you to do it too, but we can only do that if you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss a single new lesson. You have been recently traveling around the USA to different national parks. And so I was just wondering if to start out, you could share maybe one or two of your favorite things that you saw. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah, we have gone to um, Canyonlands National Park. Mm. That wasn't really recently, but it's memorable for a place called Mesa Arch. And um, it's pretty easy to get to. It's only like a half a mile to walk into that. And it's really good for sunrise. And it's so beautiful. You kind of see the sun rising behind the arch. And it's on a cliff. So you get to see like this expansive desert view. So mm. that's good for people who like easy things. <laughs> yeah. I grew up going to all these places that you mentioned. Canyonlands, Arches awesome. National Park near Moab. And I always used to recommend to my students if they ever go to the United States, don't just go to, you know, the typical Miami, New York, Los Angeles, but like really try to see the West and all the national parks because it's just so otherworldly. I've never seen yeah. anything like it anywhere that I've traveled around the world and stuff. It's, it really looks like it could be practically on another planet. Totally, I mean, it's so captivating. <laughs> You have been recently traveling around the USA to different national parks. The US is known for many different touristic places, but one of the things that is totally worth checking out is the national parks. These are natural areas such as parks, monuments, rivers, and their surroundings that are protected by the government so their natural environment can be preserved. You can see the beautiful landscapes in many different movies. Monument Valley, the one Jennifer mentioned, can be seen in this iconic scene from Forrest Gump. Until this day, I'm impressed by how much there is to see. I've even mentioned in another episode of the Real Life Podcast how visiting national parks are a big part of our culture. Especially depending on what you're interested in, like maybe you'll go to a national park, like we have so many incredibly beautiful national parks in the US. And so I was just wondering if to start out, you could share maybe one or two of your favorite things that you saw. I was just wondering in Kate's curiosity. It shows the other person that you are about to ask her or him a casual question. You could also say, I was curious about something, or I was just asking myself something. You can also use, I was just wondering if, as a polite way of requesting something or asking somebody to do you a favor. I use this expression when asking our guest Christina to share about her experience working for an NGO helping immigrants. And I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about that, what it taught you, and maybe where that led mm. you in your life. Oh my gosh, okay. So yeah, we have gone to um, Canyonlands National Park. Mm. That wasn't really recently, but it's memorable for a place called Mesa Arch. You use the word memorable to refer to something that was very good and enjoyable, or even so unusual that it's worth remembering. For example, their wedding was truly memorable. The words memorable, memory, and memorize all come from the same family. Check them out in this quiz. Complete the sentences with the correct form of these words. One word will not be used. Memoir, memorize, memories.
I wanted to ask if you had any strange experiences that come to mind while you were there or any favorite <laughs> memories from that time. Learning in chunks is much more effective than just trying to memorize a list of vocabulary. And um, it's pretty easy to get to. It's only like a half a mile to walk into that. And it's really good for sunrise and it's so beautiful. In the US, road distances are usually measured in miles. One mile is approximately 1.6 kilometers. So half a mile would be something like 800 meters. You can also use the word miles as an idiom to say that something is better than something else. For example, sending voice notes is miles better than texting. Interestingly, Ollie used the expression go at 100 miles an hour in a podcast episode. If you say that your mind is going 100 miles per hour, it means that you are thinking about or saying various things at the same time and jumping from one thought to another. I definitely don't think I need coffee to be buzzing. <laughs> but to be buzzing means you have lots of energy, you feel like your brain is going at 100 miles an hour. You kind of see the sun rising behind the arch and it's on a cliff, so you get to see like this expansive desert view. Arch refers to any curved structure like this. Here, Jennifer is referring to this part in the Mesa Arch located in the Canyonlands National Park in Utah. She says you can see the sun rising from a cliff. Which picture illustrates a cliff? This picture represents a cliff, which is a large, steep precipice. This picture, on the other hand, represents the summit or peak of a mountain. That is, the highest point of it. So when you listen to natives, does it sometimes seem like we just speak too fast and you lose the meaning? So many learners struggle to understand fast English. That's why we created our real life app where you can get interactive transcripts for full interviews with experts like Jennifer, plus vocabulary definitions. Guess what else? You can finally practice everything you are learning. That's right. Just press this button on the app and you will instantly be connected with an English speaker in another part of the world so that you can improve your English communication and discover other cultures. The best part? It is all 100% free. So download the app right now by searching for Real Life English in the Apple app or Google Play Store. Or you can just click here or in the description down below. We can't wait to help you to start understanding and speaking English better. Aw yeah. I grew up going to all these places that you mentioned, Canyonlands, Archers awesome. National Park near Moab and grow up is the phrasal verb used to say that a person goes from being a child to becoming an adult. Now, when someone says they grew up, past of grow up, with a verb followed by ing, something, they are referring to things that were common during their childhood. Since I was a child, I had the experience of visiting the national parks. That's why I say that I grew up going to these places. Leo uses the same verb structure when talking about childhood habits that led him to develop his interest in English. I grew up watching Seinfeld. I grew up reading a lot of um, literature, classics. I grew up going to all these places that you mentioned, Canyonlands, Archers awesome. National Park near Moab. And I always used to recommend to my students if they ever, in this sentence, I always used to recommend to my students if they ever, I still make a recommendation. I don't make a recommendation anymore. As nowadays, I don't coach students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. This is something I don't do anymore. Used to plus verb refers to things that were common in the past, but that you just don't do as frequently now. You can also use would for things that you repeated many times in the past. I used both of these verbs when talking about Christmas traditions from when I was a kid. So something we used to do when we we're kids is we would always have to write a letter to Santa with our wish list. Don't just go to, you know, the typical Miami, New York, Los Angeles, but like really try to see the West and all the national parks because it's just so otherworldly. What could be the opposite of otherworldly? Otherworldly is used to describe something so impressive and unusual as if mystical that it almost looks like it isn't from this world, supernatural. Mm -hmm. 
what's so cool is that this whole evening, all our time together, shouldn't officially be happening. Yeah, I know. Maybe that's why this feels so otherworldly. I've never seen yeah. anything like it anywhere that I've traveled around the world and stuff. It's, it really looks like it could be practically on another planet. I've never seen anything like it, this or that, is a way of emphasizing how surprising or shocking something was to you. And we screamed and we ran. I had never seen a snake like that in Korea and I lived there for 10 years. Totally, I mean, it's so captivating. <laughs> if something is captivating, it means that it's attractive and holds people's interest. You can also use fascinating to express the same idea. So yeah, we had some, I had some interesting <laughs> fiascos there, but I loved it. Love Japan, love the culture, fascinating place. And have you, have you been to any other national parks that were a mind blowing experience for you like that? Yeah, so we've been all, to all of the national parks in Utah. Uh -huh. So Arches, Canyonlands, Capitol Reef, Zion, and mm -hmm. how come I, the last one's not occurring to me um, right now? Oh, Bryce Canyon. I don't know how I could forget Bryce that Canyon. one. That's a for a fifth yeah. one <laughs> of the big five in Utah. That's how they market it, the big five, Bryce Canyon. Yeah. And Zion is pretty spectacular as well. Like all these places you mentioned, they all look like they're, they're in the same state, but they look like they could be in very different places. Oh yeah. But, uh, yeah. Zion I actually got to go through on accident because uh, I was driving with a friend to, to Las Vegas. He was from Germany. He really wanted to see Las Vegas and California and stuff. And so driving from Colorado to there, for some reason, the GPS routed us through Zion. Oh, okay. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was a place I'd never been. And it's just like, all of a sudden, we're, it looks like, again, like we're in this alien world, you know, with these, these strange, like, uh, strange looking rocks, like very, I almost remember them like big domes and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so. And have you, have you been to any other national parks that were a mind blowing experience for you like that? If you describe something as mind blowing, it means that it is extremely impressive, shocking, or surprising that it may take a moment for your brain to comprehend it. I could be having this exact same conversation in the United States and, you know, with my classmates there because, you know, in the end we're teenagers and kind of, you know, the wants and the needs of teenagers and really humans when it comes down to it are very similar and what drives us. So that for me was just like a mind blowing moment. And I think we're a mind blowing experience for you like that. Yeah. So we've been all, to all of the national parks in Utah. How many words are there in this sentence? She actually says, so we've been to all the national parks. And this phrase has 10 words. However, not all of them are fully pronounced. So if you got the impression that you heard fewer words, that's because it's very common to reduce, cut, and connect words in English. The words all of the are pronounced as just one single unit, all of the. In the phrase we've been to, the words have and to become very weak and you only hear the and t. This way, a sentence that when written has 10 different words, when spoken, you can only clearly hear three or four of them. That's how they market it, the big five, Bryce Canyon. Yeah. And Zion is pretty spectacular as well. Like as well can be used at the end of a sentence to include an extra example of the topic being discussed. Put simply, it means the same as the words to or also. Andrea used this word in one of the games in the talk show to mention that she had seen that same game on Friends. That's why this game is so good because like you don't have time to think, you just have to like say what comes to your mind straight away. It's like that episode in Friends as well. Um, I think that Phoebe, that Phoebe used with all of them. Um, it's just a great way to make a decision. <laughs> now let's look at the example she mentioned. Okay, clear your mind and answer the first thing that comes into your head, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you like better, flora or fauna? Fauna. Who would you rather be, Simon or Garfunkel? Garfunkel. Why are you mad at me? You said I was boring. Oh. <laughs> if you want to continue learning English while having fun, we have the right course for you. Fluent with Friends was created to help you to understand how natives speak and use vocabulary. Try it now for free with our three-part masterclass. Zion, I actually got to go through on accident because uh, I was driving with a friend to, 
to Las Vegas. Get to do something means that you have the opportunity or are able to choose to do something. The same thing can be done with stories. So if you are reading stories, um, you get to see all, all the words on the page, which makes it easy. He was from Germany. He really wanted to see Las Vegas and California and stuff. And so driving from Colorado to there, for some reason, the GPS routed us through Zion. When I say that the GPS routed us through Zion, did we intentionally want to go there? That's right, we didn't want to go there initially, but the GPS forced us to take that route and diverted us from the road we were on. To route means to send something on a specific course or direction. For example, I bought a dress from a Swiss online store, but the package was routed through England before getting to the States. All of a sudden, we're, it looks like, again, like we're in this alien world, you know, with these, these strange, like, uh, strange looking rocks, like very, Alien refers to things to which you are not familiar with or are strange to you. You can also say that something is foreign to you when it's too different from the things you're used to. I hope that you've enjoyed learning with the Beyond Borders talk show. Before you watch the scenes without subtitles and answer some quiz questions, if you've enjoyed this lesson with Jennifer, well, there is so much more for you to learn. Make sure you go to the Real Life channel and listen to her tips on how to successfully communicate in the workplace. You have been recently traveling around the USA to different national parks. And so I was just wondering if to start out, you could share maybe one or two of your favorite things that you saw. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah, we have gone to um, Canyonlands National Park. Mm. That wasn't really recently, but it's memorable for a place called Mesa Arch. And um, it's pretty easy to get to. It's only like a half a mile to walk into that. And it's really good for sunrise. And it's so beautiful. You kind of see the sun rising behind the arch. And it's on a cliff. So you get to see like this expansive desert view. So mm -hmm. that's good for people who like easy things. <laughs> yeah. I grew up going to all these places that you mentioned. Canyonlands, Arches awesome. National Park near Moab. And I always used to recommend to my students if they ever go to the United States, don't just go to, you know, the typical Miami, New York, Los Angeles, but. Like really tried to see the West and all the national parks because it's just so otherworldly. I've never seen yeah. anything like it anywhere that I've traveled around the world and stuff. It's, it really looks like it could be practically on another planet. Totally. I mean, it's so captivating. <laughs> And have you, have you been to any other national parks that were a mind blowing experience for you like that? Yeah. So we've been all, to all of the national parks in Utah. Uh -huh. So Arches, Canyonlands, Capitol Reef, Zion, and mm -hmm. how come I, the last one's not occurring to me um, right now. Oh, Bryce Canyon. I don't know how I could forget Bryce that Canyon. one. That's a for a fifth yeah. one <laughs> of the big five in Utah. That's how they market it. The big five Bryce Canyon. Yeah. And Zion is pretty spectacular as well. Like all these places you mentioned, they all look like they're, they're in the same state, but they look like they could be in very different places. Oh yeah. But, uh, yeah. Zion I actually got to go through on accident because uh, I was driving with a friend to, to Las Vegas. He was from Germany. He really wanted to see Las Vegas and California and stuff. And so driving from Colorado to there, for some reason, the GPS routed us through Zion. Oh, okay. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was a place I'd never been. And it's just like, all of a sudden, we're, it looks like, again, like we're in this alien world, you know, with these, these strange, like, uh, strange looking rocks, like very, I almost remember them, like big domes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So. 
Do you struggle with effective communication? Are you not sure what type of English is appropriate to use with your friends or at work? Well, in this other video with Jennifer, she will give you some valuable advice to help you to feel more confident. Let's check out a clip from that. Um, in environment, but what I've tended to see, at least with the companies I've worked with in India, and some of them have like offices in other countries, is people tend to default to a more Western um, approach when they're in the virtual environment. So they tend to um, make subdued um, gestures. 